right, we have breaking news. New York City Mayor Bill de Blasio officially joining the race for president. He is now the 23rd Democrat to challenge Donald Trump. De Blasio releasing this video moments ago. As president, I will take on the wealthy. I will take on the big corporations. I will not rest until this government serves working people. As mayor of the largest city in America, I've done just that. De Blasio for president, guys. Donald Trump must be stopped. I've beaten him before, and I will do it again. I'm Bill de Blasio, and I'm running for president because it's time we put working people first. Rousing music. Uh, the bed, the music bed is exciting. The music was great. <laughs> <laughs> the, sh the shade of green and the sign also very nice. But there is more to this announcement, I think, than that. Joining us now to discuss, we have Joe Lockhart. He was the White House press secretary under President Clinton. Jess McIntosh, she was the director of communications outreach for the Hillary Clinton campaign. And John Avalon, CNN senior political analyst. Who wants to go first? Who wants to go? I think okay, go. So. Look, you go for soaring background music like that when there's a palpable lack of excitement in the streets of New York. Three quarters of New Yorkers <laughs> don't want him to run. Um, he Maybe is, that's because they want him to stay here. Uh, if he showed up to work, that may be the case. Wow. But the, one of the big problems with Bill de Blasio is he is not showing up to work. He comes in late. He doesn't come in at all. He seems utterly disinterested in the job of running America's largest big city. And look, I get how if you're mayor of New York, seeing the mayor of South Bend, Indiana, soar in the polls is really frustrating and kind of insulting to your sense of entitlement. But you actually got to, you know, but that's not a sufficient reason to get in. His aides have been trying to dissuade him from getting in. Uh, again, this is somebody who has been underwater often in the polls in a city that's six to one Democrat. Somebody who's managed to keep crime low, inherited a very good economy, but the homelessness has spiked under his watch. He sees himself as a progressive vanguard, and that's why he's running. You heard a very, very left message out of the gate. That seems to be his lane. But this is, this is Bill de Blasio seems to be a, a um, you know, running because it's a YOLO campaign rather than because people are rallying around him or the people who know him best and saying you should be president of the United States. So, so Joe Lockhart, you split those running for president, the 23 candidates now, into three separate groups right. of which de Blasio doesn't fit. So, so, <laughs> so explain to me the three groups and then the de Blasio factor. Listen, I, I think there's a group of, I, I want to say, six to eight people who uh, not only believe they have a legitimate chance of getting the nomination, do have a legitimate chance. Now, Biden is the scrambler on this. If he continues to uh, perform well, particularly through that first debate, then there'll be a battle for who's the alternative to him. Uh, if he doesn't do well, if he you know, crashes and burns, things open up a little bit. But that's one group. The second group is, I think, people who, have legit who think they might be president someday, mm -hmm. but not in this term. They're mm -hmm. banking on Trump winning. And then there's a third group that are in it for different reasons. Um, I, I would look at some of the House members who are in it to increase their stature. Uh, you know, one of the ways you one of the ways you get booked on cable television in the morning is to say former presidential candidate, and they go out there and they look at it as a multi-step process. And then there's some people who want to raise an issue. I would mm -hmm. I would say Jay Inslee of Washington. I don't think he has a big chance of winning. In fact, he's a very small chance. But he's, climate change is so important to him, he wants to raise it. And then there's the, uh, the fourth category, which is just um, what John said, uh, a kind of absurd Yo. ego trip. And I'd put de Blasio in that category. Tough this crowd is, here this crowd. morning I mean, of I'm New Yorkers. I'm a progressive New Yorker, and uh, most of my friends fall into that category also. I don't think I, I could throw a coffee clutch for people who would be really excited about hearing about but, this candidacy. Well, but explain to, for people who aren't New Yorkers what the problem <laughs> is. Well, explain what a coffee clutch is to people who are New Yorkers, first of all. No, you, sorry, you, go ahead. You, you bring a small group of people together and you talk about a candidate. It's eight to ten people. What I'm saying is that I don't have any friends who are excited about Bill de Blasio for president. <laughs> But Why? I mean, I think we're not eh, because because John's actually right. I hate to say, like they don't feel that he doesn't have, have wow. much of a brand in New York. I know we don't hear that <laughs> often not, on no, today. But I appreciate yeah. it. Thank you. Well, so enough about Bill De Blasio then, yeah. since, since you yeah. three have seemed to be over with this candidacy. We can just go on beginning. if you'd like. We'll keep doing this. Let me talk yeah. about Kamala Harris because she made a statement yesterday. Look, the last five days, well, for months. There have been people who have been saying the dream ticket would be Joe Biden and Kamala Harris. And then there was some blind reporting over the weekend that there's a new surge to have that happen. Kamala Harris was asked about this directly uh, just yesterday when she was in New Hampshire. Listen to what she said. I think that Joe Biden would be a great running mate. As vice president, he's proven that he knows how to do the job. <laughs> how do you like that? I love that answer. I mean, we spent a month asking every man in the race 
whether he saw their their competition as a potential running mate. And and if we're gonna you know reverse, I, I can't imagine having a problem with that. Also, Joe Biden was a fabulous VP. Like that that's her point. That's yeah. how I feel the warmest about Joe Biden is remembering him as Barack Obama's vice president. So I thought it was a deft answer. I liked it. Yeah, for sure. But I mean, but to, to be fair, the Congressional Black Caucus, which has floated this as the dream ticket, didn't say that they wanted her to be the vice president. Right. They all said if she's not the nominee, the Biden Kamala Harris would be the dream ticket. Yeah. So I mean, I just want to be clear that in this, you know, listen, our our antenna now is so attuned to any sexist remark. But really what they're saying is that they hope that she is the nominee. Yeah, look, she is a top tier candidate by any measure. She's the candidate most voters say they want to learn more about. Um, I think it, it is actually flattering to be in that consideration set where you say either top of the ticket or the running mate in some, you know, fantasy baseball matchup in people's minds right now. Yeah, the alternative is being Bill de Blasio in your world, which is not a yes, good thing. Which, which, which is much better position to be in right. than Kamala Harris. And I agree it was a deft answer. <laughs> Um, but but I don't think it, it, it's a rank insult to her at all. I think she's she's in the top tier of candidates. I, I mean, I, I think it's a perfect answer because it shows that she believes that she should be president and nothing in that answer precludes her from eventually being the vice president for Joe Biden if that happens. There's nothing, she didn't take a swipe at Joe Biden. It was mm -hmm. good natured. It was, uh, it was the absolute perfect answer. Well, not so fast. I mean, she has, got, not in that answer, but she has talked about the crime bill. And she has criticized the 1994 crime bill and his, you know, his role in it. And they are fight, not fighting. I mean, they have differences of opinion about this. She thinks that it did do bad things for the black community and beyond, and he's defending it. Yeah, and listen, there's, there, you're never going to get, uh, except for maybe Mike Pence, uh, a candidate who's who's never had a difference right. with the guy at the top of the tickets because it's not clear that Mike Pence has ever had a position on anything once he came in in with with <laughs> Let Trump. Have, but, put up the Pennsylvania yeah. poll numbers because yeah. I think they're interesting. And Jess has got a really interesting take on this. First of all, just among Democratic primary voters, Joe Biden is leading yeah. right now. That's not unusual. It looks like that pretty much in every national and statewide poll in the country. But the head-to-head -head against Donald Trump is also very interesting, where Joe Biden's at 53% and Trump's at 42 And if you look at all the possible mashups, this is P-102 in the control room here. Again, you can see Beto O'Rourke at the bottom there is actually trailing by two points. But Jess, you look at this uh, and you say it symbolizes something else, that American voters are actually voting for the Obama administration over the Trump administration? So at this point, voters aren't tuned in. We're, we're, we're still uh, over a month away from the first debates. The average person cannot name five people running, much less 22 plus the one independent. Uh, at this point, Joe Biden is far away the lead in the polls because of the name ID. He was the vice president to the last very popular president, and that's what people are reacting to. So at this point, he's basically a stand-in for the Obama administration. So when I see him trouncing Donald Trump, what I see is people saying, we would rather have the last guy back. And that really is not a position of strength for Trump to be coming into. Look, I, I, I think there is definitely something to that. But I think also what helps account for the disparity between some of the candidates in the race is that, is that uh, Joe Biden doesn't fit into the negative stereotypes of Democrats uh, that the Trump campaign have tried to push um, uh, for swing voters in the last election and this one. He can't credibly be painted as a radical socialist who has loathing for the middle class of America. In fact, he's self-evidently the opposite. That's always been his brand. And so I think that helps benefit him in states like Pennsylvania when neighboring to his native Delaware. All right, Joe, Jess, John. <laughs> thank, thank you, you very, much. very much.